talking segment is going to be Rocco, and then we got uh, two music segments to close out the show. So, without further ado, let's bring Rocco up. Right. Yes. Rocco uh, has been with me for four years. He does a yes. great job as our videographer. And tonight, Rocco is going to do two segments. Right. Uh, the first segment he's going to do is uh, Rocco touches on the top three topics in uh, right. entertainment. And the first thing he's going to talk about is the blockbuster story with Charlie Sheen this week. Yes, indeed. Um, in case you haven't heard, um, Charlie Sheen has um, recently disclosed, as of this week on today's show, that he is in fact HIV positive. And the incredible thing about this particular story is the fact that they, you know, HIV, 30 years ago, HIV used to be a death sentence, basically, because it was the virus that caused AIDS and there was no um, way to control AIDS from coming into the body, basically. Um, you know, there were people that die, were dying from it, including uh, the actor Rock Hudson. And, but in this case, you know, Charlie Sheen would have to be pretty fortunate now that he lives in a time where, you know, most, um, the, the, that HIV can be relatively controlled and that you can, um, you know, you can stay off AIDS for the most part. I mean, the thing is, though, is, is that there is, we should not be taking it lightly. I mean, that's the worry about, you know, when you have a disease like, a horrible disease like um, AIDS under control is that we get complacent. We start thinking like, you know, we have that same kind of untouchable attitude that unfortunately, you know, is why all this triggered in the first place in the 1980s. So um, I think that, you know, in terms of, you know, Charlie Sheen being honest about it, he, you know, I think it was very to his credit to do that. But I think that it's important for, you know, people, especially young people, to understand that, you know, yes, we do have ways to control HIV, but at the same time, I mean, yeah, control HIV, you know, get, not get AIDS. But the thing is, though, is, is that you should still be responsible if you're sexually active. You should, you know, wear a condom. You should um, not share needles with people that, you know, if you're doing, you know, really hard drugs like heroin, for example. There are, you know, things that you should not be doing in order to not get this. You know, you have to be responsible when you're sexually active. It's very, very important because, you know, I mean, you, you just can't, you know, assume that because, yes, we have the medicine um, advancing now that, that we have this kind of situation where, you know, everybody can just do what they want in terms of sexuality or what have you. But I think it's important that we, we still have the mentality that, you know, yes, you know, when you have HIV nowadays, you can live a relatively longer life than you would have. But it's very, very important to be responsible when you have a sexual partner, when you... Um, you know, you have a situation where, you know, you're in, in that kind of relationship, you have to be upfront, you have to, t you have to test, and you have to test often. And I think Charlie Sheen is the ultimate, you know, um, you know, cause, you know, of, uh, you know, uh, like, what do you call it? Uh, um, the words are not coming to me right now, but the important thing is, is that it's a, it's a teachable moment, basically, that, you know, we still cannot treat HIV status and AIDS is something to take lightly, and I think that's very, very important, even in the day now where we have the means to, you know, control, at least control, you know, HIV in terms of getting AIDS. So thank you very, very much for that. Okay, Rocco. Um, all right, now uh, your movie review, Rocco. Yes, yes, thank you. The, uh, the new uh, movie that I have this week is none other than The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. It is directed by Francis Lawrence and stars Jennifer Lawrence, no relation, uh, Josh Hutchinson, and Liam Hensworth. Um, the story takes place, it's based on uh, the best-selling novels. Katniss Everdeen, played by Lawrence, goes on a mission out of District 13 to a now war-torn Panem in order to assassinate President Snow, who is trying to assassinate Katniss. Um, you know, as we're coming into the fourth film in this series, I think it's very important to, you know, go into discussing how all these films have kind of come full circle now. You know, when we start, when Hunger Games started off, it was kind of like this, you know, oddly kid-friendly version of uh, the Japanese novel Battle Royale. And it's been a pretty good, you know, action film franchise, you know, in the sense that we have a female hero, a young female hero, which you don't see a lot of in, you know, very popular culture material. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's one of those stories that kind of is a great leap forward in terms of, you know, 
women being heroes and, and that sort of thing. And the way it takes on the future is very, very different than most stories of this type. You know, usually everything's very technological, everything's futuristic. You know, you know and, and the, the uniqueness of Hunger Games is the fact that it mixes things like um, you know, archery and, and planning dresses and, and, you know, weird hairdos and weird costumes and all sorts of things that just you would not normally see in a science fiction story set in the future. But in terms of where the story is going now with Mockingjay, comparing, you know, part one and part two, the, fe the feeling is I had with part one was the fact that, you know, it was a lot of, you know, story but there was little action, and the problem with this one is that we have a lot of action, but the story kind of isn't, you know, it gets, it gets, it, it runs and runs a little bit too much. I mean, if you take both two, two parts together, it's a four hour movie, it's over four hours. And I just think that, you know, yes, they, I know the movie studio wanted to make more money off of it, you know, because there's a lot of fans and all that kind of stuff, but I feel like it does, it does a very good big disservice to the movie because, you know, people like, I, like personally myself, I like movies that are lean, that are, you know, that get right to the nitty gritty of everything, you know, from point A to point B to point C. And I feel like as much as, you know, the Hunger Games movies are pretty good for the most part, I feel like Mockingjay really does not benefit for the fact that there's two two hour parts to this thing. So, but I think like, like overall, it's good. It's a good satisfying way to end the whole Hunger Games thing. So anybody who loves Hunger Games will be happy with this movie. But I think that for everybody else, I think that it, it could have been much better than it was. It, it could have been, there could have been more discipline in terms of the running time and all that kind of stuff. And I think that just because you have a lot of fans that will go see your movie, doesn't mean that you should subject them to like a bloated running time of over four hours for any movie. Because no matter what, you're gonna, it, it's gonna get, it's gonna run and run and run. And you're just gonna get like tired of it. But overall, it's good. So I give um, Hunger Games: Mockingjay Part Two three out of five stars. And thank you very much. Uh -huh. All right,